Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. All right, so today I'm gonna to be painting heading north and I'm sipping on my Earl Grey tea today. And if you enjoy this process, I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you're gonna find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for my materials today, I'm gonna to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm gonna be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, cobalt blue, Mars black, deep yellow, fire red, and burnt umber, which I will call brown. And of course, you can switch up those colors as well if you'd like to, but that's what I'll be using. For my tools today, I have a standard white piece of chalk that I'll use for some drawing. And then I have three brushes. I have a half inch wide flat bristle brush. I have a number 10 round synthetic brush and I have a number one round synthetic brush. And I will refer to these as small, medium, and large as we go through the painting process. And of course, you can switch those up as well if you'd like to. If you're painting along with me, you'll probably wanna have a cup of water for washing your brushes as well, <coughs> excuse me, as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, I will be providing you with a couple of additional resources that can help you throughout your painting process. One of them is a link where you can purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the large canvas to the same type of paint and brushes and all the good stuff in between. So that's there for you. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we're gonna be painting ourselves the sky. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The colors I'm using are black, blue, and white. And how I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna bring my sky almost halfway down my canvas, but I am gonna want it to be a little bit higher on the right than on the left so I can provide myself a little bit of a slanted hill behind there. I'm gonna be having my sky dark at the top and along the sides, and it's gonna get lighter and lighter as it goes towards that horizon. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna load my brush with black and a little bit of blue, and on the left-hand side, I'm gonna find about the halfway point, make myself a little bit of a marker, and then on the right-hand side, if this is about halfway, I'm gonna be about on another inch, inch and a half above that mark. So a little bit higher than halfway on the right-hand side. That'll just give us a visual stopping point for our sky. And then with that black and blue, I'm gonna start up at the top of my canvas. I'm not gonna be using a ton of black because I know that the black will really take over and overpower the rest of the sky if I'm not careful. So I just have a little bit of the black with the blue on my brush and I'm bringing it down these sides. You can always add more black to the equation if it's not enough for you, but it's really hard to back it out of that sky if you go too dark too soon. So I've got that going on. Now what I'm gonna do is without washing my brush, I just keep picking up blue paint. And I'm not using a lot, so this way if it, uh, it, it will dry quickly for me, and if I wanna do a second layer to it to make it look softer, I can certainly do that. But right now, just using a little bit of paint, I'm using this arcing type of motion so I can get it to gradually kinda of get lighter and lighter as it goes towards the, um, towards the horizon line, which is my goal here. And what I like to do is I like to give these continual brush strokes so it avoids what I refer to as cut marks, which would be your brush stopping at a, at a point like that. So I do have you know, not too much paint on my brush so it dries quickly, but enough where I can certainly at any point just kind of go back and forth so it will um, get rid of that cut mark. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start picking up blue with a, a little bit of blue with white on my brush. And what's gonna happen is my sky is gonna get lighter and lighter as it comes down towards my horizon line. 
So I don't need my horizon line to be perfect at this point because I am going to be having the hill kind of sitting in front of it. So as you come in down here, don't worry about it being perfect or not as it's meeting this point in through here. You just want to kind of have a nice full coverage. I'm even not wanting it to go full white because my hill I want my hill to be a little bit lighter than my sky so I'm making sure that I don't go all the way white on this and then what I do is I just kind of go back and forth and I can continue to do this back and forth motion until I get this nice and blended you can even if you want to let it dry for a minute and then if you feel that you want to do a second coat on it which i may very well do a second coat once i see how it dries um, but if you want to do a second coat go ahead and do so if not no worries we are going to be utilizing this same brush for the next step so once you've got your sky done you can wash and dry this large brush and get ready for the next step All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're painting the ground. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The colors I'm using are black, blue, and white. And how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna be starting at the bottom and I'm gonna work my way towards the top. I'm gonna to have my ground darker at the bottom and it'll be lighter at the top. I'm not going for a smooth gradient like I was going for with the sky. I'm going for more of a lumpy bumpy snow kind of <laughs> feeling to my ground. So I'm going to start with all three of those colors on my brush at the same time. So I'm going to load some black, some blue, and some white. I am going for this to be more um, kind of a softer color than the sky too so don't feel that you need to make the colors as vibrant as you did with the sky. I can use a good amount of paint on my brush and I'm going to be kind of rubbing it left to right. I want it to look on the messier side. Next time I load my brush I'm just keeping my brush dirty and I picked up some white paint so what will naturally happen is it's going to get lighter and lighter as I go towards the top but I do want it to kind of be a natural progression so if at any time you you come to a spot and it's looking like it's getting too light too quickly for you then you can certainly pick up some of that um, blue and the and the black again if you want to add more blue feel free to pick up a little bit of blue and white on your brush so you can really kind of alter and steer these colors as much as you want to but predominantly I'm just kind of moving it left to right making sure with a little bit of a circle -y type of motion to my brush and as I go towards the top I just keep picking up white paint and it'll get naturally lighter and lighter as I go up you can see certainly have some darker and lighter areas if you want to you can bring you know more lightness in down below if, to make it look like there's little bumps and stuff in the snow but this will the application method that I'm using will typically give you a pretty um, lumpy bumpy snow <laughs> looking um, display anyways and then you can certainly blend out anything if you want it to look smoother just kind of use a light touch and blend it out a little bit but again as I work my way towards the top I'm utilizing more white on my brush if you feel like you go too white or and it goes you know a hundred percent white 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 again too quickly for you you can certainly add back in some of those other colors but I am looking for it to be pretty light up at the top as I'm working my way towards this horizon line, if you still have a really wet sky, you could either wait a minute or just kind of paint into it and just let that snow kind of go in front of it. And if you do have some wet spots, that's totally fine. Just kind of let it just work into the actual hill itself. So don't feel that it has to be 100% white at the top either so feel free to kind of tweak that as much as you want to I just added a touch more blue to my brush because I felt like I wanted a little bit more blue in here and now I'm just kind of going back into that white and as I get up towards the top just going to give myself a a landscape type of look that's got some different high spots and low spots and I'm loading it up with some some good white paint up at the top and it doesn't all have to be the same color up at the top if you want there to look like there's a little bit of a, a hill you can have some darkness and then some lightness so you can play with um, the the little peaks and valleys of the of the top of the hill all you want and then once you've got this all nice and done we are going to be utilizing 
our piece of chalk for the next step. So once you've got this done, do any little tweaks that you want, put your large brush away, take out your piece of chalk, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna draw an outline for our pole and our penguin. I'm gonna be using my chalk, and I do wanna forewarn you that it'll be a little bit easier for you to draw on your canvas if your paint is dry. So this is that time where you get to take that extra long break if you'd like to. Or you can find some kind of fun fanning method to get it dry, or you can do as I did and just whip out your blow dryer and get it dry that way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you some um, guidelines and markers and stuff for us to make some really basic shapes. You do not need to put yours where I put mine or even in the same exact shape as mine because these are just illustrated type of objects. So you can certainly feel free to make them a little bit different if you want to. So I'm gonna start with the shape of my penguin. Um, I'm gonna have my penguin over on the right side of the canvas and he's gonna be right within my snow area. So if this is about halfway into my canvas, I'm gonna go about halfway between there and the end of my canvas, or the right side of my canvas, and I'm about halfway up down the canvas is where I'm gonna put the head. I'm gonna be putting a circle that is about, I would say, two, two and a half inches wide by two, two and a half inches tall. So somewhere in through there is where I'm gonna put my first circle. And then I'm gonna just put like an ob, a kind of like a oval type of shape for the body. I'm gonna start almost down at the bottom of my circle, right about in through here is where I'm gonna start the front part of the body to come out. And I'll do the same thing on the right side for the back side of the body. So something like that. I want him to kind of look like he's almost like leaning, not maybe leaning forward, but kind of walking. So I'm gonna have the oval bump out a little bit more on the right side. So I'm also gonna come down, I would say about halfway between the circle and the bottom of my canvas. So that's gonna be about the bottom of my oval. So I'm gonna go ahead and kind of connect these so it's a little bit further out on the right side and a little bit more shallow on the left. So this is not as far out as the edge of this circle, and this is a little bit further than the edge of that circle. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just paint, or paint, draw myself a little bit of a penguin arm that's gonna be holding on to the suitcase, something like that, or penguin wing, I should say. And that's all I'm gonna do for my penguin outline. I'm gonna go ahead and move over to my post. I'm gonna start with my sign portion my sign, I'm gonna have a really big like arrow pointing into the left hand side. So I'm gonna start with a rectangle that is kind of tipped a little bit. So if this is about halfway left to right in my canvas, I'm gonna go a little bit above my um, snow line. So somewhere in through here. And then I'm gonna go about halfway between here and the top of my canvas. So about halfway and then over to the left just a little bit. That's gonna be a second dot. I'm gonna make two more dots. I'm gonna make my, um, my next one is gonna be right about here. So if I was to just kind of travel in a diagonal fashion, I'm maybe about three inches away from the edge of my canvas. May not be able to see that. Let me get a pencil so you can see it on the white right here. There we go. And then I'm gonna do another one that's gonna be similar to here. So however long this is, you do almost you know about the same here at a little bit of an angle. And then you're just gonna connect your four dots. So you're gonna have a, um, a rectangle that is just kind of leaning to the, leaning to the side. And then I'm gonna make myself a little bit of an arrow coming off the edge. So I'm gonna whip out my pencil so you can see this. So I'm gonna just extend this about an inch, do the same thing up in through here, maybe about an inch, inch and a half. And then I'm gonna give myself just the end of a point. So you can have yours, mine's not even in the center, it can be however you want it to be. Just something pointing this away. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put my pole on. So I'm gonna have my pole just leaning just a little bit. So I'm gonna bring this somewhere in through here and gonna give myself two vertical lines coming down here. I'm gonna stop about maybe an inch and a half from the edge of my canvas. You can, you can um, make a straight line here. It doesn't matter because we're gonna put snow in front of that. And then I'm gonna travel up to the top in through here, maybe a little bit to the left or so it looks like it's leaning just a little bit. Put the rest of the post up in through there. And then I'm gonna draw myself a big circle on top of this to 
um, to be the topper to my pole. And that is all I'm going to be doing for my outline. We're going to use our medium brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can put your chalk away, take out your medium brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to paint the base coat for our pole, our sign, and our bird. I'm going to be using my medium brush. The colors I'm using are black, white, brown, yellow, and red. So all my colors except for blue. So what I'm first going to do is I'm going to get this little guy painted in. I'm going to be using just a medium gray for the base coat of my bird. So all I'm doing is I'm going to take some white and I'm adding a touch of black to it. So I want this to be just a, a medium gray color that when I want to go and put my details on my bird later, I will have a nice neutral kind of base coat to work with. And it'll help me to get dimension on the feathers. So that's looking pretty good to me. I know it'll get a little bit darker as it dries. Actually, let me, now that I'm seeing it on my canvas, I think I actually want it just a tiny bit darker here. So I know that I, I do want it to be um, on, on the side where it, I can see it on top of my background and it's going to give me a good... Um, structure for for the ending yeah there we go that works for me and then i'm not going to do anything really too fancy as i'm painting this in a, uh, along the um interior of it but when i get to the edges i'm going to fluff it out just a little bit so i'm just kind of going up to my chalk mark right now just getting this in here but when i get to the edges like my um my wing in through here i'm going to kind of give myself just a little soft edge to it so instead of having a real firm line along the edge I'm just using the tip of my brush and I'm going to do that through the whole thing along the edges so this way I will naturally start the fluffy penguin process <laughs> so I'm going to do that along this edge as well and along this edge as well and then as I go towards the top of the head I'm going to give them some little kind of fluff going out the top of the head, something like this. I know that I'm going to have them kind of leaning, you know, walking this way, so I'm having my fluff kind of go in the back, backwards direction. And then I'm going to wash and dry my brush, and this doesn't have to be perfect. You can have it in whatever kind of fluff that you want. I'm going to wash and dry my brush. I'm going to um, paint the post itself or the pole itself with just red paint. So your red paint is going to look different on the dark background versus the light background. And at this point, that's totally okay because we're going to be doing a lot of a lot of details on top of it, which will help to get rid of that color shift or at least get rid of it enough for it to not matter by the time we're done. So right now I'm just going to put a pretty heavy coat of red on here. So as it dries, it will, you know, it'll definitely get a little bit darker, but I'm again, okay with that because of all the details that we're going to be doing on top of it. So I'm getting that on and you'll probably see your brush mo brush marks at this point too, as well, which is totally fine. And I'm going to go ahead and paint this whole area down here with my red color as well. When I get down to the bottom where it's meeting the um, the bottom edge of the snow. I do not need that to be a perfect edge because we're going to have a big snow pile in front of this bottom part. So don't feel that you need that to be um, perfect at all. And then once I've got this colored in, and again, if you can see through it and you can see some of that detail underneath, don't worry about that. We'll get, we'll take care of that later. So my sign portion, this is where I'm going to be using white, yellow, and brown. And how I'm going to do this, I'm going to put all three colors on my brush. I have white, yellow, and brown. And I'm just going to kind of give myself this carefree kind of brush stroke throughout it. I'm going to um, utilize all three colors. Right now, I'm just kind of alternating them, the brown, yellow, and white. I'm going to be steering more towards brown and white, but I like to use that yellow in here just to give me a little bit of... Um, more diversity in the brown color so it will give me more of a kind of a traditional wood grain look and I'm using quite a bit of white as I'm going through this first pass so I have a nice um, base that is 
not so see-through. So I keep just kind of loading my brush with red or um, yellow, brown, and white just to get this first coat on here. And you'll see as soon as I get this on, I'm going to quickly do a second pass to make the wood grain look a little bit more realistic. But I'm just going right up to my edges right now i am except for the um arrow part the main part i'm doing predominantly a left to right brush stroke but when i get to the these edges on the um, tip of the post i had to just kind of outline it now i'm going to just use this left to right to get these to to blend in with one another and then once i've got it all colored in what I'm going to do is I'm going to use heavy brown paint on my brush. So I'm really just going to pick up a whole bunch of brown paint and I'm going to give it these kind of chaotic streaks throughout here, which is going to make it look a little bit more natural. You could even do like a little knot of sorts within the um, wood grain if you wanted it to look really nice and natural as a piece of wood. But you could do a solid color for your sign too. I mean, you could make this sign black, you could make it white, you could make it blue, purple, whatever is, you know, speaking to you is totally fine. And, you know, just play with it as much as you want to. I'm going to get a little bit more of this brown over back on these edges and I like to just kind of wet it and then just kind of pull it in and give myself some good diversity in these colors to make it look like a nice wood grain in through here and then once you've got that all nice and done we are going to be utilizing the same brush for the next step so you can just wash it and dry it just making sure I've got all my edges the way that I want them to be. But I know that I'm going to have lots of snow and other details too. So if I want to do any changes later, I can certainly do that. So you're going to wash and dry this medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what I'm going to do for the next step is I'm going to be doing the base coat for the black areas on my little penguin in through here. I'm gonna be using my medium brush. You could certainly use your small brush if you wanted to, but I'm gonna use my medium brush because I like it to um, kind of mix in with the edges and have like a little fluffiness to it. So I'm gonna use black, but I might also use some of my gray color as well. So how I'm gonna do this, I'm loading myself with some black paint, and when I'm doing my smaller areas, what I like to do is I'll take my brush and I'll spin it in the paint on the side of my palette, which will give me a nice pointy tip and then when I go to paint, I don't press hard. So what I'm gonna first do is establish kind of the center of the face. So I'm gonna, that's gonna be where my, um, where my beak is gonna be. So I'm gonna give myself a little bit of a diamond type of a shape to the left of the center. So I'm going somewhere in through here with a little bit of a diamond type of a shape. I'm gonna color it in black, but I'm gonna make those edges kind of soft and a little and a little ruffled. So you don't have to do a solid type of color, just something that is gonna give you um, some nice some nice softness around the edges. And then this is going to work its way into the black feathers that are around the eye. So I'm gonna just kind of bring this center area up a little bit in through here. And then what I'm in essence gonna do is kind of outline the the where the side of the face is gonna go. So I'm just taking the tip of my brush and kind of giving myself a little bit of a outline in through here with just like a little soft line. And I'm gonna do the same thing over on the left-hand side. So I haven't reloaded my brush, just kind of utilizing a touch of that black on the tip of my brush, just giving myself a little bit of an outline. I'm having my penguin a little bit looking to the side, so this is gonna um, be a little bit smaller on the left than on the right. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm reloading my brush. I'm gonna give myself a couple of circles where the eyes are gonna go. So I'm gonna have those in through here. And yours can be bigger or smaller than mine. You can feel free to make yours whatever kind of size that you want. So just kind of putting that little circle on in through there and then I'll do the same thing over in through here. And again, if this left side ends up being a little bit smaller than the right side, that's totally okay, but you wanna make it look like they belong together. So definitely kind of get them in a similar type of size 
from one to the other. And again, I'm just kind of giving myself some little soft edges around the exterior. I'm gonna load myself with a little bit more black to give myself the rest of the outline where I want the black to be. So this is gonna be a wing in through here. So I know that the, it's gonna come out into this little area that we've already designated. And I'm gonna give it a little bit of a curved line up in through that neck in through here. So that's gonna get it to kind of meet up with the neck. I'm gonna do a little area along the back side of my, um, of my penguin, just bringing this down in through here. And I'll also do a little sliver over here on the left side. So I'll put my feet on in a minute, but this kind of tells me where my black areas are. I just reloaded my brush and I'm gonna color in these black areas with a brush stroke that's gonna kind of mimic little feathers. So I'm gonna just kind of bring this back like this. And if you see some of the gray through, that's awesome. That's my intent. I want it to look nice and kind of fluffy and to maybe have some of that gray showing through. And if you're doing it and you're like, oh, I don't see enough gray, you can certainly pick up a little bit of gray. Or if you get some of your black into an area that you didn't want to, you can certainly correct that with a little bit of the gray. But as I'm coming down this back side, I am going to just kind of bring these edges out so I have a little fluffiness over there. And then as I go ahead and do my wing, I'm going to bring that brush stroke in the direction that I feel that those feathers would be cascading down that little wing. So something like this, just giving myself that uh, little bit of movement in there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit down in through this area in through here, which is just the backside of your penguin. And again, mine is just a little cartoon character. It, which means we can do whatever we want to it. So if you want yours to look a little bit different than mine, feel free to do so. I think I'm gonna put a little bit of this in through here. So he's got a little bit more of a neck in through there. And then I'm gonna put the little feet on as well. So I'll just get this, puff this out just a little bit in through there. So my feet are, I want them to kind of look like they're walking. So for me, I'm gonna have one in through here. I'm just gonna paint him with black right now. He's got little ankles like that and then a little cute foot like this. I'm not gonna be doing much detail on them. I'll put a little bit of color to give them a little bit of dimension, but right now I'm just gonna be doing this. And as far as like the eyes and stuff for eyelashes, all that little detail, that'll come, that'll come later. So I'm just gonna put these little legs here. This one's gonna be up in the air a little bit. So I just put it a little bit at an angle and just giving it that little that little bit in through there. And then you can certainly feel free. I didn't use any, I think I'm gonna add, I just picked up a little bit of my original gray so I can put a little bit more of that lightness up in these little feathers up in through here. I felt like I lost a little bit, but you can certainly feel free to make yours as gray or as black as you want it. It is intended to look like black feathers, but that little bit of gray will help to make it look a little bit like it's got a, a bit of dimension to it. So once you've got this done, you can wash and dry this medium brush because we are going to be utilizing it for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be finishing our pole. So I'm gonna be using my medium brush. The colors that I'm using are red, white, black, and maybe some brown too. So how I'm gonna start this, I'm gonna do my stripes on the bottom part of my pole, and then the white stripes, and then we'll work on some other details while those are drying, and then we'll put a highlight and a shadow, and it'll be all fancy by the time we're done. So I'm going to be picking up some white paint um, with my medium brush, and I'm gonna have my stripes kind of curved so it makes it look like this is a round object. You can certainly have yours going straight. You can have yours in whatever way that you want. But what I really do is I start with kind of a slender line. You could certainly measure yours out too, whatever you know is works for your, your brain and your hand to work together is totally fine. I just kind of try and keep them at equal distance from the top 
to the bottom. You might end up with more stripes than mine or less stripes than mine. Whatever is, you know, works out on your um, pole is totally fine. I think I need another little one up in this direction, up and through here. And then once I have them on there, I just sit here with my brush and kind of widen them as much as I want them to be um, wide. So the left and the right edges of the um, post, if you don't get them as clean as you want, you can certainly, after you've got these all on here, you can clean up those edges um, with either a small brush or you can put a highlight or a shadow. I'm going to put a shadow down the left side of the pole and maybe a highlight down the right side too, but it's tough sometimes to get these edges as clean as you want them. So, you know, just kind of let happen what's going to happen. We can make it like you know, maybe an elf came and painted this and he didn't do the best job while he was painting the pole. So you can allow yourself to not be perfect as well. It's all right in the painting world to have these, um, you know, just imperfections. We embrace the imperfections, especially when it comes to doing lines and stuff like this, where we, we feel that we want it to be perfect, but it doesn't always work out that way. And I'm okay also with seeing the red showing through my white paint a little bit. If you want yours to be more of a solid kind of stripe, what I would recommend is just kind of doing one layer, let it dry, and then come back and do another layer. And just the more layers that you put on it, the more it will be less translucent. But for me, I'm totally okay with it. So I let it, I let happen what's going to happen. I'm just going to kind of paint this in here and thin layers will dry quicker. So if you do want it to um, dry quickly for you, just kind of paint out any thick areas like I'm doing right now. I'm just kind of painting out any thick areas. I am going to do um, a second coat with my red in any of the areas of this pole that I feel um, might need it. Sometimes again when we're doing these uh, these quick layers like this they don't fully cover the way that we want them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wash my brush and I'm going to put some red paint on my brush so I can do um, a second layer wherever I feel that it might be needed. So just washing and drying my brush, putting a little bit of red paint on my brush. I don't need much. I just want to make sure that wherever I feel it needs that second coat in through the in through these red stripes that I have it. You could also utilize this thought process to just clean up the edges of any of your white stripes. So you can certainly do that as well. And again, if you want it to dry quickly, just do a thin layer of it. And then what I'm going to do with this same red paint is I'm going to put a second coat on my ball part at the top. I don't need this to be vibrant red because I know that I'm going to be having my snow on top of it but if you which is going to take up the majority of it but if you wanted it to be of a more vibrant type of red you could put a little bit of white in it um, and let it dry and then come back. I do want a little bit of a light spot to give it a bit of dimension so I just put a tiny bit of white paint on my brush and I'm going to just kind of get this little one little area to be a lighter version of red. So just a little bit of a, a little bit of a highlight in through there is going to get me into this vicinity that I would like. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a couple of details on my sign. So I'm going to use my um, medium brush I think I might switch to my small brush but I'll start with my medium brush you could use your medium or your small I'm going to wash and dry my brush and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a, a shadowy three-dimensional piece back here on the um, right side of this arrow part so I'm going to just put a little bit of black paint on my brush and I'm going to give myself a little bit of what would be uh, the, I will call it the inside part or the back side of that um, sign, something like this. And again, if you felt that you needed to use the small brush, feel free to do so. I, you could always just um, 
spin your brush in your paint and that'll give you that nice pointy tip. I'm doing the same thing up here on this top side and then maybe I'll put a little shadow at the bottom in through here. This would just tell the viewer that maybe it was tipped a little bit and maybe we're seeing a little bit of that underside of it and I'm just bringing this straight across going right over my post part. Right now I'm considering this to be part of the sign. I will in a little bit put a shadow on my post as well. I think I can do it right now. It looks like that's pretty dry. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to wipe my brush off on my paper towel. I picked up a little bit of water as well. I'm going to do a little bit of a shadow on my post to represent the um, shadow of the of the sign right on the right on the post itself so this is just a little curved line to tell the viewer that this is in fact a curved object that the shadow is on and that's working for me and then I, I think I'm gonna switch brushes to my small brush to do the word North Pole so I'm switching to my small brush I'm gonna do just a light creamy color so I'm gonna take some white and mix it with a touch of brown. So I don't necessarily want to go all the way white because I know that I want my um, snow to be the whitest. So by utilizing light colors without them being white, I won't steal the show away from the snow. <laughs> so I'm just going to write North Pole. I recommend that you do um, your own penmanship. That makes it the easiest. You could certainly use a piece of chalk to um, to plan this out, but I'm just going to go for it. So I'm going to do kind of block type of letters. And uh, again, I'm just doing the words North Pole. You could certainly do yours, whatever. Maybe you want to write the name of your family on here or whatever works for you. I just have to make sure that I save enough room for all the letters. So we've got, and that I spell it correctly. <laughs> I've been known to not spell things correctly when I just go and paint them in this kind of process. So I'm concentrating on trying to get this to be spelled correctly. So I, th I think I'm doing good so far. <laughs> and we're just gonna go ahead and do this last word. And so one of my tricks is to try and just keep the letters the same height. I, it looks like I might be squishing my last couple of letters here a little bit, but that's all right. Um, so I keep the, the letters in similar height to one another. I like to do block letters. Um, it's just a, where my hand goes naturally, but you might want to do a different style letter. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put a highlight and a shadow on this little guy here. I'm switching back to my medium brush. I'm just going to put a little bit of brown on this left hand side. So wash and dried my brush, picking up a little bit of brown on my brush. I just, this one, this will help to clean up the edge of it and it'll also give it a little bit of dimension. So once I've got that on there, I just wipe my brush off and just kind of blend it in just a little bit. This might not be a necessary step for you to make your painterly eye happy, but it makes mine happy, so I like to implement it. And then I wash and dry my brush and I'm gonna put a highlight down here. So I'm gonna use water on my brush. So I just dipped my brush in water. I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of white, a itty bitty bit like a really tiny bit of white paint, dab it on my paper towel, and I'm just gonna rub in a little highlight on the, um, kind of like almost on the center of this, a little bit to the right of the center. And I just want it to be a little translucent so it has a little bit of a highlight. And that's all I'm gonna be doing. I'm gonna be using my small brush for the next step. So once you've got your post done, you can put your medium brush away wash and dry your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish the details on our little penguin. I'm gonna be using my small brush. The colors that I'm gonna be using are blue, white, red, yellow, uh, maybe a little brown, maybe a little gray. We'll call them out as I see them, but that's the gist of the colors I'm gonna use. So I'm gonna create a little orange color that we'll be using for the beak. We'll use as little accent feathers around the body and for our feet. So I've magically made it off camera so you can see where I'm headed. So what I've done is I've used a little bit of red, probably about twice as much yellow, 
and spun that together even more yellow. So the yellow or the red, excuse me, is very powerful. So you don't need a lot of red in your yellow in order to make it into a nice orangey type of color. And I want this so it's not see-through or not that see-through. So I'm gonna add a tiny bit of white paint into it. The white will help um, increase the opacity of it so it's not as see-through. So that's looking pretty good to me. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna utilize this color for the beak and the little accent color, the little accent pieces. So I want my mouth to, or my beak to kind of look like it's open a little bit. So I'm gonna do this little triangle type of uh, shape in through here and then leave a little space and put another little triangle type of space underneath that. And then I'm gonna, while I've got this color on my brush, I'm gonna put it along the edges where the um, black feathers meet the gray feathers, but you don't have to overdo it. I'm just using that as a little bit of an accent type of a color. And if you do overdo it, you can always back it off with some of the gray um, from the that you used for the feather color. And then I'm just gonna kind of bring a little bit down in through here. So it kind of crosses over both of those um, colors. Do the same thing back here in this little spot in through here. This is just adding this cute little accent um, to the to the penguin itself. I'm gonna put some on the little feet, the little penguin flipper feet, something like that. And I suppose you could put it on the um, legs too, but I'm just choosing to put it on the feet. This foot, I feel like we're seeing kind of the side of the foot. So I'm gonna just kind of put it a little bit on the side. Like I feel like I would have the black part on the bottom or maybe a little bit at the tippy toe too. And then what I'm gonna do, you can certainly um, put an, an additional layer if you need to. I'm gonna put a little highlight on this beak in a second here, just getting another little layer on here. I'm gonna, without washing my brush, pick up a touch of white paint and I'm gonna give myself a little, a little um, highlight right there on the tip of the top part of the beak. That's a little bit too much. Let me wipe my brush off. Um, a little highlight on the bottom part too. And of course, this is one of those steps that you might feel like you need to kind of keep fiddling with it in order to get this into the little shape that you want. But I'm just looking for mine to be very excited looking and wanting to go to his new place in the North Pole. So I'm just gonna give that little bit of a highlight. Gonna do the same thing on the toes. So just a little bit, or on the feet, put a little bit of white on the edge just to give it a little bit of a highlight so we can see it on top of, um, on top of the snow and just having it have its own little identity in through there. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to wash and dry my brush. I'm going to um, put the blue color in the eyes. So I'm washing and drying my brush. I'm picking up blue and white at the same time on my brush. So I have blue and white. And I'm gonna give this um, a crescent at the bottom part of the eye. I'm using both colors on my brush at the same time so I can have this good diversity in the colors and have kind of a lot of sparkle within these eyes. And you can certainly, you know, have as much fun with this color as you want. I'm bringing it all the way up this right hand side to the little crease up in the right. But I'm leaving the um, the pupil part. I'm going to pick a little, pick up um, some more white paint just so I can um, give a little lighter spot down at the bottom portion of the eye. So just a little bit of a little swipe of the white down in through there. I'm going to put my sparkle in the eye in a second here. And what I'm gonna do for sparkle, I'm washing and drying my brush. And I'm going to pick up just white paint. I'll put eyelashes on in a minute, but I kinda of wanna get the feathers on the face before I put the eyelashes on. So I'm just doing a couple of sparkles. I have white on my brush. I'm gonna do kind of a big one over to the left and down, and then just a little tiny dot up there, and then do the same thing on the other eye. So a big one there, and then just a little dot in through there. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the rest of the feathers on. So I'm not gonna wash my brush. I have white on there right now. I'm gonna pick up um, 
gray and a little bit of brown. I don't know if I said I was gonna use brown or not, but I wanna have like a little bit of a shadowy area underneath the, the base uh, of the belly. So a little bit of brown could work. You could use uh, your gray plus a little bit of black, depending on how um, dark that you wanted it to go. Maybe a little bit in through this neck area, but you don't really need a whole heck of a lot. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start just picking up white paint and giving myself some bright feathers that are gonna come in this front section of the belly. I'm gonna fade it into this darker area over on the right hand side. I'm doing these in a with a small brush in a curved fashion so it looks like there's a lot of volume to the feathers so you can see some of that gray underneath and you can see the direction of the feathers themselves. As I come over in through this area, I just picked up some of the gray without washing my brush, so this way I have kind of a seamless transition um, into the darkness in through there using the same, a similar brush stroke. You could certainly make sure that you have enough darkness down at the bottom. I just picked up a little bit of um, brown and black just to make sure that I have enough darkness down at the bottom here so it looks like it's shadowed in through there and of course you can certainly play with yours as much as you need to down at the bottom but I like to have that dimension down there so just making sure I've got it in there and then I'm going to move right into the face so the face I'm going to have some little rosy cheeks um, right underneath those eyes so I'm going to pick up or make myself a little bit of a pink color so I'm using white plus a touch of red paint. This is gonna give me this beautiful pinky, um, rosy cheek type of a color in through here. So just getting myself a little bit of a pink color and I'm going to put it right underneath those eyes. I will be putting some white as well in a minute, but this is just gonna get my little pink rosy cheeks started. And then I just wipe my brush off on my paper towel pick up a little bit of white paint and start the um, progression into the lighter areas. I may pick up a little bit more pink before I'm done, I uh, just to make sure everything speaks well together, but just gonna kind of get this to blend into the neighboring areas, give myself a little light um, feathers down at that chin area. So I'm just picking up white paint and it goes re really well on top of the gray, giving myself some nice texture on these on these feathers and just making sure that it all blends in. I'm putting some, you know, you can pick up gray plus a little bit of white just to make sure your feathers above your eyes work out well too. If you want a little extra texture up in through there, that's looking super cute to me. I do need some eyelashes. So of course you can fiddle with your with your um, feathers all you want, but I'm gonna put some eyelashes on now. So I just wipe my brush off. I'm picking up a little bit of black paint and I'm just gonna give these little tiny eyelashes up in this right hand corner. You can certainly use a little bit of watered down black paint if you want to, just to give yourself these little tiny eyelashes coming up in through here. I'm gonna put some up on this side as well. Sorry if my hand is getting in the way, but there's only one place I can put my hand for these little guys. So I'm bringing them about halfway down the eye. You could certainly bring yours as far down the eye as you want. You could also put a little bit um, of snow or a little highlight on the eyelashes. So feel free to tweak that as much as you want. And we are gonna be utilizing our small brush for the next step. So once you've got your cute little penguin all nice and fluffed out and any little details that, that you may want, of course, adjust it as much as you want. I think I want a little more volume on his head in through here so you can just kind of keep having fun and when you feel like you're all set we're going to be um uh, we're going to use this same small brush for the next step so you can just wash it and dry it and get ready all right so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to paint a little cute suitcase um some footsteps in the shadow underneath our penguin I'm gonna use my small brush. You might find at some point that you wanna use your medium brush um, for the snow 
for the footprints and stuff, but I think I'm gonna use my small brush all the while. So I'm gonna first load my brush with brown and white at the same time. So I have about equal parts of brown and white. I'm gonna create a little rectangle type of shape for my suitcase, and I'm going to have it um, a little bit below the edge of my wing in through here. I've got mine kind of crossing over my uh the body a little bit and i'm just kind of making like a little soft rectangle you could make yours perfectly straight whatever you want and then i'm just going to kind of color it in with brown and white i i'm just looking for this to be maybe an old kind of weather type of suitcase nothing really fancy in through here i'm going to um put a little bit of a handle and some um bits of information that'll give it a little bit more dimension, but I'm just kind of going left to right to get this colored in. And again, you could, I think I'm gonna actually use a little bit of black in the equation. I think I want it to be a touch darker. So I just picked up a little bit of black to give myself a little bit of a darker tone in through here. And that'll help me with getting some nice dimensional elements to it. Now I am gonna pick up without washing my brush, more black and I'm gonna give myself a little bit of a shadow at the bottom of my suitcase, something like that. I'm also going to give myself a little diagonal line in through here, which is gonna give me a little bit of a um, place where I can put um, the side of the suitcase. I'm gonna just wipe my brush off on my paper towel and give myself a little bit of a handle. So somewhere in through here where it's gonna make sense that my little guy can hold on to it. So something like that totally works for me. I'm now going to pick up without washing my brush a little bit of white paint. So I'm gonna give myself a couple of little straps on the side of my suitcase. So, and I'm gonna do it like in a little bit of a curved way. So it looks like these straps are um, just kind of hanging on or um, going around the suitcase. So I just picked up a little bit of brown as well. So white and brown. This is also gonna allow me to give myself a little bit of an edge to the suitcase right in through here. So I'm really not doing much other than kind of selling the story of there being a little bit of shape to this um, suitcase. So again, just brown and white on my brush at the same time can give me these um, this information that there is different um, areas of the suitcase. I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of white paint right now and give myself a couple of little buckles. So maybe just a little buckle in through there. And I'm just giving myself kind of a little horizontal line, something that's a little bit lighter than the actual suitcase itself. And then maybe just a touch of a little highlight on this handle in through here. That's all I'm gonna do for my suitcase. I'm going to not wash my brush I'm gonna pick up a little bit of water. So I have all those colors, black, brown, and white on my brush, plus water. I'm gonna use this watered down kind of color to give myself um, the footprints or to start the footprints and the shadow. So I want this shadow to be away from that foot. So I'm gonna put it, I think I need a little bit more black on my brush. So, um, I want it to be away from the foot so it looks like it is off the ground. And I'm utilizing a little bit of water in my brush in order to have this translucency to it. I'm gonna put a shadow underneath the body as well. So this is gonna be a nice dark area underneath the body. And then this little foot here, I want it to look like it's the front part of it is touching the ground. So I just put a little dark area in through there. Picking up a little bit more paint because I think I want this shadow to be a little bit darker like this. Yeah, that's working for me. And I'm gonna give myself um, a shadow underneath my suitcase, but I want it to look like it's off the ground a little bit. So I'm gonna disconnect the shadow like this and then just give myself a little bit of an area that looks to be like a shadow from my suitcase. So something like that will work for me. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this watered down paint plus maybe a little bit of gray to put my footprints in place. So I want them to look like they are coming from a distance. They're gonna be small back here and they're just gonna kind of follow the path that my little um, penguin has taken. 
So I'm going to just make these, um, I'm actually, I'm going to pick up a little bit of blue so it looks more like the, um, looks more like the ground color. So I'm picking up blue, we use blue, black, and white, blue, black, and white, and just making sure I have kind of like a muted little color on my brush. You don't even have to make it a solid color, but just something that's going to be dark enough to show up on top of here. So I've got one foot, and these are going to be bigger um, the closer that they are to the um, to the penguin. And then I'm just going to get them smaller and smaller. And you can certainly have them kind of going in little different directions. And like maybe he's kind of swerving, or like he's you know coming from a a far off place into there. And then once I've got those footprints in there, I'm going to pick up without washing my brush a little bit of white paint to give a little bit of a pushed piece of snow, a little fluffy piece of snow on the side of those footprints. That's going to make them look almost a, a little bit three-dimensional, like when he was walking, he pushed the snow a little bit and make them look like they're um, kind of going into the snow. And then you can make any little adjustments that you want. We're going to be utilizing our medium brush for the next... Um, no, we're going to use our large brush for the next step. So once you've got your footprints and your suitcase and everything else around here that you want to, you can put this um, small brush away, take out your uh, large brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to paint the snow on our pole and the little pile of snow at the bottom. I'm going to be using my large bristle brush. The colors I'm using are the same colors that I used for the snow, which are black, blue, and white. And how I'm going to do this is I'm going to start with what I'll refer to as darker snow or the shadowy snow, and then we'll work our way to the bright snow, which would be the white snow that's on the top. So I like my snow to look three-dimensional, so I'm going to have it nice and dark down at the bottom, especially this little pile of snow. It'll get lighter up as it reaches the post, and then I'm going to have some snow sitting on here, so I'm going to put some of the darker snow, like, uh, you know, something that resembles this as the first coat, and then just kind of pile it high, and then we'll put a little shadow, and it'll be all done. So I'm going to start with a tiny bit of black, a tiny bit of blue, and a little bit of white, all on my brush at the same time, because that's what we started with when we did our snow. I'm going to start down at the bottom. So I want the darkest down in through here, maybe a little bit darker. I'm putting a tiny bit more black and um, blue on my brush in through here. And then as I work my way towards the top of this pile, I'm going to just pick up white paint on my dirty brush. I'm going to move my canvas so I have an easier time. And as I do this, I'm going to just be manipulating it in a, in a, fashion that to me resembles like the edges of the snow as it's piling up making it look like it's got some you know some depth to it and has some fluffy pieces and so I just kind of wiggle my brush a little bit and all the while like I just wipe my brush off on my paper towel because I want this area in through here to get a little bit darker. So I wiped off some of that bright white and then I just kind of keep playing with it, like lightly just touching and maneuvering these pieces around. And I'm going to tackle the top portion the same way at, um, up at the top of the post. So that's looking pretty good to me. And you could certainly, while you have these colors on your brush, if there was any other areas that you wanted to work on that you felt could benefit from more snow or from anything of that nature, feel free to, to work on them. So then I'm going to do the same thing up at the top. If your brush is overloaded, you could wash it and dry it, but I just wipe mine off on my paper towel. I'm, I have a smaller area, in my opinion, to work on, so I'm gonna reload my brush with just a little bit of the black, blue, and the white. Not a lot, I'm even gonna wipe it off on the side of my paper uh, on the side of my palette so I don't have too much on my brush and then I'm just going to decide where I want my snow to be piled so I would like some up in through here maybe some is just hanging down here and snow is great because 
if there's anywhere that didn't turn out exactly as you wanted to during the um, first process, you can just use snow to hide it. So just put snow wherever you want. So I'm gonna have it coming down in through here. I'm gonna have it kind of covering this whole area up in through here, maybe coming down this little side. And again, I'm just using that kind of muted blue, black, white to give myself this first layer in through here. I think I'm gonna have this little corner kind of covered but showing a little bit maybe something like this will will work out for me have a little bit in through here and then now that I've got it where I want now I'm just going to start picking up white paint I have a little red on there too we don't want pink snow I just picked up white paint and I'm really going to just kind of put it heavily at the top and blend it in a little bit with that darker stuff but not a lot you know just a little bit to give myself um, you know, some varying different tones of it. You can certainly dot it if you wanted it to look like you have little speckles here and there, but just, you know, have fun with how you want to shape that, picking up more white so I can go ahead and give myself some bright areas. And you can see I'm primarily working towards the top of my snow pile, and then I just kind of dabble it down um, towards the darker area. So just giving myself this little bits of uh, snow and then just kind of wiggling my brush a little bit to get into those darker little areas but in a way that makes sense to me that it's just kind of fading down into those areas maybe a little bit more brightness in through here like it's a little bit more piled up over here and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to wash and dry my brush I want to put a tiny bit of shadow underneath some of this snow so I just wash and dry my big brush you might feel more comfortable using your medium brush but I'm going to use my big brush with a little bit of black and brown on my brush I don't think I said I was going to use brown but I did just to be safe and I'm just going to kind of push my brush up underneath some of these little pieces of snow so it makes it look like they are casting a little bit of a shadow on the um, on the object below them so wherever you have a little piece that dips up and you don't even have to do it on all of them just some of them would be awesome I'm going to put some underneath here and if you accidentally move you know bump into some some wet snow the lighter colors along the way you can certainly go back and just kind of touch them up in order to get them to um, do what you want them to and then we have another little step that we've got to take care of with uh, we're going to be utilizing our small brush to do so so once you've got your snow done you can put your large brush away take out your small brush and get ready for the next step All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to paint some stars. I'm using my small brush. You could certainly use any kind of application method that you want for a thousand little stars, but I'm going to use my small brush because I want, I want this more or less to resemble more stars than snow, so I want to have some control where I'm going to have a couple of twinkly stars. So right now I'm just utilizing the tip of my brush to put as many little stars as I want. I tend to use my palm of my hand to help me not press too hard in my canvas. Um, it really kind of gives me a barrier or kind of a stopping point for how far I push my brush into my canvas. You could certainly, if you want this to resemble you know a, a million little stars in the galaxy you could do a splatter type of effect to get them on here but again i'm just going for a nice simple i want to have a starry sky with some twinkles maybe you want this to be a snowstorm um but i'm in my head i'm seeing stars so that's what i'm going for in through here and of course again same holds true with the snow the the more stars you have you can put them in spots that hide things that you weren't quite sold on in the first um, go around but i'm going to put some twinkles in some of these in a second just want to get a lot of them on here and once i've got them on here i'm going to make um, almost like little starburst type of stars which is going to make them look like they're twinkling so all i do for that is i pick a couple I do want to make sure that my brush is under control so I'm going to take it and spin it in my paint on the side of my palette if you want to you could also use a touch of water on your brush but just you want to you know have 
as much control on your brush as you can. And then what I do is I take whatever star you want to sparkle and just pull out these little kind of um, streaks from one side to the next. You can do four, you can do eight, however many streaks you want is gonna make it look like the star is sparkling from a distance. Like it's got that little starburst um, effect to it. So I'm gonna do it for probably, I don't know, five or six. You could certainly do it for a hundred or none or however many you want is totally fine. I find that um, having, of, if I want to give it that sparkle type effect, having quite a few really sells the story. So I just make sure that I have enough that make my, my painterly eye happy. And then we uh, have one little step left to go and it's going to be with this small brush. So once you've got all your little sparkling stars done, you can wash and dry this small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I typically sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. I think I'm gonna go bottom left on this one. I'm going with my small brush and black paint. I sign mine with my initials, but you could certainly sign yours with your first name or the date or a symbol or whatever you want for your identifying mark to be is totally fine. And that is gonna conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you've painted yourself a very adorable winter image and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.